Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in to another video. Today what we're going to be looking at is a new service that was announced by AWS in the last couple of days and it goes by the name of AWS Cloud Shell. So what is it? AWS Cloud Shell is uh, in simple terms a shell environment that runs in your favorite web browser. Um, benefits of this would be that you wouldn't have to have your own uh, shell environment configured um, with credentials sitting around to connect to multiple different environments. Instead, what you would do is if you're logged into the console of an AWS account in which you want to operate or carry out some administrative functions um, through the CLI, because it's normally often easier to drop down into the CLI um, and get some nitty gritty tasks done rather than clicking around on the console or if you want to do um, batches of tasks it's generally easier to do them um, using the CLI um, rather than clicking around again on, on the console so uh, definitely offers uh, many many benefits of working uh, in the AWS um, space I guess uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to log in we're going to have a click around we get well not click around we're going to to have a type around and just navigate around the environment and understand what we get out of the box, um, how we can configure it, what we can do with it, what the limits are. So first things first, what you'll notice here is there's no button here for Cloud Shell. It's a new button that they've added in since they added the feature, um, which is only available in specific regions. So if I go to a Cloud Shell service, it will tell you directly which regions it's available in. Currently, the supported regions are uh, Europe, so island region, you've got Tokyo in the APAC, uh, North Virginia, Ohio uh, in US East regions and Oregon in the US West region. So you've got those um, five regions within which the service is available. And for me, because I'm based in London, um, the one that makes most sense is to click on the island region. So if I click on that, it's going to change my um, location to or, or uh, yeah, it's going to send my location to Ireland um, and it's going to launch a cloud cell session. So we're straight in. So first things first, I'm just going to navigate away from this to show you um, what I mean by that button. So that button there now. So this is something new they've added into the console. If you want to launch a cloud cell session from wherever you are, right, I could be in EC2, I could be in the RDS dashboard, I can be in any dashboard at all, right? As long as I'm in a supported region and I have the right permissions, I can click that button and I can go ahead and launch it. Um, gets me straight into the session. So, so what's going on here? So it's dropped me into a terminal session of a temporary compute environment, probably running in some sort of a container. And it gives me um, access to this through my, uh, the, the user I'm logged into the console with. So it ultimately picks up adopts exactly the same level of permissions that I have um, as per the user that I'm logged into the console with. So the same level of API permissions are available to me. So if I'm logged in here and I'm accessing, I don't know, I want to query if there's any uh, S3 instances, for example, uh, so S3 buckets, I can do uh, AWS S3 LS and it will go ahead and it will bring back the name of some S3 buckets. Um, and there you go, you can see uh, there's a bucket there, right? So so this CLI, just to show you that it's picking up credentials, and I'm going to have to blur out the credentials just to make sure that you can't see any personal information. But if I run AWS STS get caller identity, this shows me the current access token that I'm logged in with. Um, and here you can see it's pulled back a lot of information. It's got my user ID, which I've blurred out uh, most of the account ID that I'm logged into and also the ARN. So the ARN here in this case is the role that I'm logged in as. Um, and if you're using AWS SSO, this will also work. So AWS SSO uh, is AWS single sign-on. Um, it supports AWS single sign-on as well and it will adopt the role um, that you are uh, connected to the account with through the use of single sign-on. So it all works very well. Um, so this is quite nice because what you're not having to do, as I mentioned earlier, is have your own environments with um, you know, all of your sort of CLI or, or uh, programmatic access keys kicking around, um, configured to connect to various different environments. It is all from within one console and it's secure in that you have to be logged into the console before you can access this in the first place. So um, that's great. 
And then the next thing I guess you've got to think about is if this is considered a temporary compute environment, what sort of persistence do I get in this sort of an environment? Um, so we'll discuss the limit shortly, but what we'll do first, we'll just dig around here, right? So let's have a look at um, what version of Amazon uh, Linux are we running here? It's definitely going to be Amazon Linux because um, it is uh, uh, an Amazon Amazon's own shell. So if we just cat uh, OS release, um, we'll get the information up and you can see here it's running Amazon Linux 2. Um, let's see how much memory we've got available. We've got four gig or so not available, but it's got four gig of RAM. So this is running um, in a small compute environment, which has been allocated four gig of RAM, as you can see there. And let's again, let's just go to top and let's just check processors. So I'll just press the number one there to expand um, on the compute resources. And you've got two CPUs there. So you've got two CPU, four gig of RAM. And if we just check the actual we can check the CPU info as well to see what processors we've got. So we've got um, two Xeon Platinum 8175M CPUs um, running at 2.5 gigahertz per core as well. So that's the CPU information. So you've got a fairly reasonably sized compute environment. And I think that's enough for sort of CLI type access. This environment comes fully embedded with uh, various AWS CLIs. So you'll have the ECS CLI, the AWS CLI, as you've seen there. Um, EKS CTL is not there, but there you go. You can install it. Um, now, as the Cloud Shell user, uh, you obviously can't install. Um, so let's check if something is installed here, right? Um, so tree is not installed. So if I want to install tree, for example, I'm in my home directory, by the way, I can, um, I can sudo to root. So you definitely have the ability to switch to a power user and then I can install tree from here. So I can just use yum repo, for example, right? So if we just do a repo list to see what repos are configured, help if I can type properly. So we've got the Amazon repository. Um, if I just go ahead and install tree, it's going to install it. Now that's installed and that's available across my sessions. So as long as I don't actually um, completely restart the session or rebuild this session and I'll show you what that means in a minute this will be available to me um, if I log out and log back in again as well and on that note uh, what do I have in terms of uh, file persistence so where I am at the moment is in the cloud shell users home directory and if we check df what you'll see here is that user has been allocated uh, so there's one gig of uh, user space allocated to home directories, um, which means I have one gig of usable space and this is actually persistent storage. So if I wanted to touch a file here, I touched a file here um, and then I, uh, I exited the session. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that and I relaunch um, another Cloud Shell session. What you'll see here is I will actually have that file still available, which is great. So, yeah, I can I can install packages. I can create files, obviously, because I'm in the command line. What if I want to upload a file? Can you upload and download files? Yes, you can. So they've built in some SCP functionality into this, which is fantastic. So if you click here on the actions um, drop down on the top right hand corner, um, you can see there's various options set. One thing you notice immediately, which is very nice if you're used to working in a, a in a sort of a shell environment, is the ability to split the terminal into multiple different ways. So I can start another here by session here by um, creating another tab. So if I split into columns, I'm going to get another session here. So I've got two sessions. There's a limit on number of sessions you can run per region. You can run a maximum number of ten sessions, I believe it is per region, uh, as per their Q and A. So how great is that right you can start splitting and then you can split again so if i want to split something into rows you're getting something like um, what you'd get in maybe if you're using a terminal emulator like tilix for example uh, which is a, a popular one that i use in ubuntu um, you're getting that sort of an experience here so this is great really really useful uh, to have that ability to split sessions uh, and then also, you can create a new tab. So if you just want a whole new tab and you can have sessions, you can have different sessions in multiple tabs, for example, as well. Right. Um, so really useful to be able to switch between tabs and columns there. 
and then going back onto uploading and downloading files so if i wanted to download a file i can click on download a file um, obviously i'm going to give it the file path so i would enter um, my home directory and my test file here and i'll be able to download that and similarly if you want to upload a file you can click on upload file you can select a file for example here i've got one that i've created earlier hello world and i'm going to click on open file and click upload and it's going to upload that file into my home directory it's told me that it's uploaded into home cloud show user directory so if i do an ls you'll see the file is there so you can move your code so if you're a developer you've got loads of scripts saved and you want to move them into this environment so you can have them available to you whenever you need them well you can do it easily you don't need to start copying and pasting text and you know buying every single file that you have on your local environment into this environment you can literally just zip them all up or tarball them and upload them very very convenient to have that functionality there so what else can we do with the console again if i restart that i will lose the fact that i installed tree um, but if i do restart it the files that i have created will still persist that is persistent and the way this persistent storage works is it persists every file that you can uh, you create in your or, or copy across to your home directory for 120 days from the last login uh, to cloud shell and so for example you get to 119 days you know at day 120 you're going to lose all of your files if you log in on the 119th day it resets your counter so your timer will start again from zero days so you've got another 120 days so you probably will be logging if you're using this sort of environment you probably will be logging in uh, quite frequently so i think that 120 days limit is quite a fair limit um it's sensible and the amount of space they've given you one gig yeah it's not it's not unlimited but it's a good amount of space to save a bunch of scripts and useful useful sort of um i guess scripts that you'll be running on a regular basis to manage your environments and workloads in aws and then there is a settings option as well so don't miss that because this is quite useful what it allows you to do is configure very very basic options here so such as text size if you want to make it small you can have it nice and small and if you want to make it nice and large you can make it as big as you want it as well so nice to have the ability to change text size you can change your theme between light and dark depending on what you're used to working with i'm guessing because my browser is set to dark theme even though I change it to light. Well, mind you, actually, it did change there. Um, the contrast changed very slightly. Um, not much. There you go. Maybe because my, brow my, my browser is already in a uh, dark theme or in dark mode, you're not seeing the benefits of that much. Um, and then enable safe paste. So this ultimately is described as uh, it allows you to verify multi-line text that you're copying before pasting it into your actual browser session. So it's nice to have that option. And what you'd ultimately do is if you're running um, paste something like that, for example, um, or actually, um, yeah, mm, yeah, okay. So I, I, I can't get that in uh, for some reason. Anyway, there you go. It's described as allowing you to verify multi-line text before you paste it in. Now, if I'm doing Control V, Control V also works as a uh, paste command. So there you have it. That is the command show. Um, what else can we test here? So um, we've talked about persistent storage. We've talked about permissions. You get exactly the same permissions as per the user you are logged in and initi initiating the session with. Um, you can elevate privileges to root. You can install packages. Um, that will also persist across sessions as well. Um, and uh, we've looked at how we can manipulate the session by changing text size or creating additional column uh, sessions or sessions split in different columns and rows. Also very, very useful. Um, so another thing to note is the one gig of user space that is per region. So it's not one gig across all regions. It is indeed one gigabyte of user space per region so that home directory is different in different regions um, so if i was to initiate a session in a different region for example i would not have these files that i've copied here available in the other region just a point to note there um, and again obviously you'll have your 120 day timer there as well um, you've got a, a limit of uh, up to 10 sessions uh, per region per user so again just something else to bear in mind up to 10 sessions which should be more than enough to be honest uh, 
um, you, you really wouldn't want to use an environment like this for sort of long running processes, right? This is a short temporary sort of compute environment. Um, if you're running a job in the background, it's not considered a long running process, it will be terminated. So don't consider this to be um, long running uh, type of an environment where you're going to have, you know, jobs that you throw into the background and think that they're going to be running for days on end. It doesn't work like that. This is not this is not an EC2 instance that's going to be there forever until you terminate it, right? Um, so there you go. Um, I think this is going to be quite useful uh, for carrying out administrative functions. By default, the only people that can access this is administrators and power or someone with a power user role associated to their to their IAM profile. Um, but administrators can grant access to uh, other users or even to the whole organization for other uh, users off the console to be able to initiate cloud shell sessions um, and again you would do that as per your company's policies uh, and as per your requirements right as maybe groups of users that are doing operational work within the environments need to drop into the command line for operational efficiency reasons and for that reason you could give them access to do so and restrict other people um, so there you have it We've taken AWS Cloud Shell for a test drive today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will be dropping more videos out um, in the near future on various AWS features, both new and old, and also some knowledge transfer sessions to share with you my experiences of working on AWS, how I do certain things, how you may choose to do certain things, and give you an opportunity to ask questions, and provide feedback, or even tell me how you do stuff that might help me to work more efficiently. So we can use that as a forum to transfer knowledge of AWS within the real working world um, rather than just sort of study based knowledge. Actual real life working experience, um, you know, stuff that you hit day to day whilst you're working with these tools, with these great, great tools that AWS give us and, and how we can all learn to be more efficient with them. So on that note, I hope you found this useful. If you have, um, please leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button um, so you can be notified of future upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and all the best.